Okay, welcome everybody to the Boating Advisory Council meeting. It's been a while since we've had this. Uh, good to see everybody here. Um, okay, uh, like I said, welcome and especially welcome to Lana Visser, who just found out that she was approved, ready to go. Um, and do we have a quorum? I'm trying to count the heads here. I believe we do. Can you confirm that, Becky? How many do we need? Uh, you need five. Five. I a see majority. That. Majority. Yeah. So I guess I, I we got to look at that at filled seats or not. But we have six in here, so it takes care okay. of. Okay. All right. So we do have a quorum. So we can go ahead and open up the meeting today. Um, do we need to do any introductions? Um, let's go ahead and do that. Okay. Shall I? I guess I can start. I am uh, Brett Olson with the on the Boating Advisory Council, and I represent the water sports. I'm Robert Pete. I represent the boat dealers in the Boating Advisory Council. I'm Trent Hickman, and I represent paddle sport in the Boating Advisory Council. My name is Jason Taylor, and I represent the Utah Guides and Outfitters. I'm George Summer here. I'm the boater rep on the uh, council. I think Lana's mic is muted. Yeah. <laughs> Lana, your it mic is, is muted. There, yeah. you there you go. <laughs> there I am. My name is Lana Visser, and I think I'm on the boating side of it. Education. <laughs> Education. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's first time I've been official. <laughs> Yep, and then just a correction, George is the fisherman rep, uh, the fishing anglers. You're, you're a boater. It's good, George. <laughs> <laughs> On the minutes, it said I was the boating rep, so I just oh, went well, with that. We need, we need to correct that then. That's a, so that's a first off correction. Representative. Okay. Okay, I think that's everyone. And then we have... Um, Nate, Ty, and Becky with us? Yes. Yeah, hello everyone. I'm Nate Owens. I'm the representative for the Utah Division of Wildlife Resources. I'm the Aquatic Invasive Species Coordinator and the Boating Access Coordinator. Nice to see you, Nate. And then as, as in there, I was just kind of waiting with things and uh, I'll introduce me and then turn it over to Becky. Uh, I'm Ty Hunter, I'm the Boating Program Manager. And uh, now it's Becky's time. Can you guys hear me this time? I tried to yeah. talk earlier. <laughs> okay, I'm Becky McBride. I'm the secretary of the Boating Advisory Council. So I serve all of you. Um, and I work for Utah State Parks. I just want to make a couple suggestions because I had to do notes for another meeting just barely. Um, and it was hard going from the recording if people did not announce who was talking. So can you guys just when you go to comment or something, just make sure you state who you are so that I can make sure I record it correctly as I'm taking I'm taking the meeting minutes, please. Yes, I think we can do that. That was Brett Thank you. saying that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, perfect. So let's head into our meeting here. And um, the first item that have is the approval of minutes. So I'd like to open up for discussion on the minutes. Um, does everybody have those in front of you? Yeah. Okay. And are there any changes that need to be made to those minutes? Uh, uh, lunch break. I motion to approve. Okay, Robert Pete, motion to approve. Uh, George, I'll second. And George seconds that motion. All in favor, say aye. 
Aye. Aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. Perfect. Okay, so the meetings, uh, the minutes from last meeting on February 19th, 2020 have been approved. Okay, looking at this now, um, I guess I will turn the time over to Ty. I'm uh, getting trigger happy in doing this. I'm trying not to hit the little hang up telephone thing that's also <laughs> read with that. So <laughs> as it's going and a lot of times I'm wiggling the mouse and it's not uh, the bar's not coming up for me. So anyway, um, thanks, everybody. Uh, I just want to tell you just just as a little bit before we go into the to evaluate our next item to evaluate the grant submissions. Um, thank you. Thank you for being patient through all of this. I think COVID is, has instilled patience in us all. Um, it has been a long time since we, is, we have met. Um, I would really love your input uh, to find out how you feel about this particular forum. It will never replace being face-to-face -face with one another, but it does ease and maybe make availability a little easier for, for us all, especially like we got uh, Trent here that's in, in Costa Rica. So... <laughs> That is so, so wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, but I just want to tell you thanks, and, and I really appreciate your patience. Um, one, one other thing uh, to kind of get in there, as you know, that we have uh, eight positions um, on the um, – eight filled positions on the council right now. Um, we have um, – Six six of us here with that. We're missing Richard uh, or seven. I'm not sure. I'm not. I can't. I can't get my, keep my counting on this. But um, I'd like to excuse uh, Richard uh, Welsh, our our uh, Walsh, our chair. Um, he's had some medical things that have come up, and he had to get it taken care of. So we'd just like to give him a, a, a an excuse. You know, excuse him from this meeting. Um, anyway, but. To move into this, we got uh, this year. We kind of have another abbreviated um, grant uh, evaluation. Uh, again, this will be the last year that it is this way. So, um, please, uh, however you can get hold on to your hats for next year. Uh, an hour and a half for a meeting that will deal with grants is not going to be uh, viable. So, just be ready. It will be long. We will have people presenting. Um, so we will, we will get that ready to go. And with this being virtual in this realm here, that may make it easier and, uh, a little more flexible for us to do, to do these types of meetings. So anyway, uh, I think at this point in time, um, let's move into our evaluate the grant submissions. Uh, and maybe just before as a precursor on that one too, as I said, this will, the reason why it is quick is because we have. And I, I don't want to steal Nathan's uh, thunder out of this and, and explaining things, but this is the last year that we will be funding uh, Fish Lake. Um, that uh, project will be closing, will be coming to a close. And so that will free up quite a bit of money for us to in the matching realm so we can have um, more, more submissions that we can grant money to. Um, we are, we have a pretty small budget this year. It is probably comparable to what last year was, but there are some other items that we want to pull and, and go through with this. So I'll turn the time over to Nate. Thanks, Ty. Yeah, just to elaborate a little bit for those of you that haven't been involved in this process uh, for the last few years, we've recently taken the approach of focusing on maybe one high priority water every few years and going in and doing a, a lot of work, basically doing everything needed at that water and then pulling back and determining what that next focal water is going to be. Recently, it's been Fish Lake. Fish Lake's been the focal water now for probably four years now. Um, FY22, state fiscal year 22 is going to be the final phase of construction of that project currently two two of the three marinas up there have completely been re renovated um the final marina will be renovated starting next july uh so that will 
that has largely taken up the boating access budget for the last few years. Uh, going into FY22, we have a total of $1,603,000, uh, or sorry, $1,603,000, one uh, $123 mm -hmm. available. So I will put that in the chat right here just so you guys can keep that number in mind. Hey, Nate. Yes. Hey, George here. That that money becomes available in July 1st of 21, correct? Uh, I'm going to get to that, George. Okay, sorry. Jump in no, the game. My no bad. Worries. You, no worries. I like the enthusiasm. So, so right now, we have just over, we have around $900,000 available for projects right now. So that money is available as needed. This next fiscal year, so July 1, we're going to have an additional 600 something thousand available. So the total amount that we can put towards any FY22 projects is that $1,603,123. However, we have already committed to Fish Lake for that final phase of construction. And that's a, I can't remember off the top of my head, it's somewhere around uh, 1.3 million. So basically what we're talking about is after you account for Fish Lake, this is what we have available in federal funding to put towards new projects. 287,546 dollars. So the project list that you guys were sent <clears throat> had nine new projects that were proposed in addition to that one fish lake phase three project so it boils down to essentially nine projects competing for this much in federal funds but again going back to ty's point state parks we're lucky in utah because state parks has typically provided the required state match for all of these projects um, in cases where that state parks match is not available or is a little bit short, then we heavily prioritize those projects that can bring their own match to the table to fully leverage that to take advantage of all of these federal funds. Um, we do have a few projects that are part of that packet that, that you guys were sent that are bringing some match to the table. So we can kind of talk about that as we go through these. Um, Ty, what do you have an idea of what state parks can provide in terms of match? There we go. Got it going. Um, we're probably just just to be careful to keep uh, a little bit of reserve in there because, of course, we're not only matching boating access, we're matching um, the the boating infrastructure grant. Yep. And so I would say, dare say this year that we cannot exceed $50,000 in the, in the matching portion. So that'd be the 25% of the project. Um, so yeah. again, I'd like to really echo what Nathan's saying is, is let's prioritize these of, of who can bring money to the state money to the table or monies to the table to make that match for the federal grant. Yeah, so again, I'm going to put this in the in the chat box. And does everyone know how to access the chat over on the right hand side? No. So if you go up to the top right, you'll see that box with the three lines in it. So if you hover over it, it says chat with everyone. Yeah. If you click on that, it opens up the chat box. Hopefully. <laughs> Oh yeah, okay. So the 287 is what we have available in federal funding. And then we have the $50,000 in parks match, which would leverage 150,000 in federal funding. So 
basically we have $127,000 in federal funding that we have available to us, but we don't yet have a match to fully take advantage of. And that's where some of these projects will come in with the match they're bringing to the table through county funds, through in-kind contributions, what have you. <clears throat> Does that make sense to everyone? Great. So um, let's see, Ty, what do you think the easiest way to go through this is? <clears throat> First off, did everyone get the link and was able to access those proposals? It was kind of last minute. Um, yeah, I got it. Mm -hmm. All right, great. So if you pull up that PDF that Ty also sent out, that was kind of a summary spreadsheet. Uh, and here I can actually present this so you can see what I'm talking about. So yeah, okay. Here's what we got. <clears throat> like I said, we've got, we have nine new projects, and then we've got the Fish Lake construction phase three down here, which has already been accounted for since we typically try and complete those projects that we've already committed to. So we've got two hundred eighty-seven thousand dollars in federal funds available for these top nine projects. And we've got $50,000 in parks match. Over here in the notes, I've indicated which projects could potentially have something that they're bringing to the table that could be considered match. Uh, for example, the Jordan River Mini River Sports Center. <clears throat> They've secured $70,000 in matching funds. They're expecting an additional $65,000. Otter Creek State Park. Uh, they're providing their own funding from the park to match the federal funds. So again, they're, this money that would be the match would not be coming out of Ty's matching budget. Is that correct, Ty? Yes. Yeah, awesome. Uh, Big Sand Wash Access Road Improvements. Those matching funds would be provided by the Habitat Council that's um, <clears throat> coordinated through the Utah Division of Wildlife. Those have not been secured yet. The hope is that those would be secured through the next round of evaluation of those projects. Um, the Logan River Blue Trail Design and Engineering Project. So this one would be a multi-phase project. <clears throat> Typically how we like to do these is we like to fund the design and engineering phase first so we can be confident that the design has been done correctly and we have decent numbers to go by as we go into the construction phase. What we found in the past is if we don't do our due diligence and have that engineering done by professionals that we trust, sometimes we get construction costs that are dramatically underestimated that we commit to, and we find ourselves in a position where we're having to essentially double our commitment because the design and engineering done was so poor quality that it couldn't accurately estimate those construction costs. That project, the city and the county are both investing a total of 322,000 in the future construction, but that, that money is not available for some time. So that money is not available to do the initial design and engineering, which is the, what they're requesting here. Um, there are a couple of these projects like the live cameras at the Utah Lake Marinas. Uh, in the project proposal, they list to have cameras installed at several marinas. And obviously there's the potential that if not all of this funding can be found, that could be potentially scaled back to focus on just a couple marinas. And maybe they come back a year later and request the additional cameras for those marinas that cannot be covered this year. Um, <clears throat> The rowing dock at the Great Salt Lake. So this one's a little bit 
I still, I'm still trying to figure out whether this can be eligible. Uh, the work that they're doing can be eligible for state match use because they are doing it prior to when this project would actually take effect. Uh, the Fish and Wildlife Service determines what's eligible for use as match. This one falls in that gray area. Typically, they like that match to occur at the same time the, the project is being funded. Um, they are The Great Salt Lake rowing uh, is putting this dock in as soon as possible. And what they're asking for is a second dock. Uh, so if the Fish and Wildlife Service determines that the dock they're putting in now can contribute and serve as that eligible match, then no state parks funding will be required to be that match. I'm still waiting to hear back because within Fish and Wildlife Service, there's a little bit, this is definitely a gray area. And I have some people telling me one thing and some people telling me something else. Um, so that might end up being determined at a later date. This one too, the Utah Lake Linda Marina parking. Um, there are a, a variety of options that lay, they lay out in this proposal. Um, and typically I like to break things down into options depending on what funding is available. Basically the minimum that they could do uh, would be a cost of $32,000. So these values over here, you know, that are roughly $74,000 uh, or $75,000, that could potentially be scaled back to $32,000 eliminating some of this need for the required match from parks. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So federal, federal funding wise, we can almost, and I would have to run the numbers very quickly, but we could almost cover all of these with federal funds. Uh, if we can figure out a way to mix and match and fully leverage the match that some of these people are bringing to the table. Any, any questions before we start kind of diving into the individual proposals and evaluating those? We've got a lot of, a lot of things to consider here. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm good. Okay. Uh, any initial thoughts? <sighs> well, I, I mean, just curious. How long have they been asking for the live cameras at Utah Lake? Uh, this is Robert, by the way. Yeah, this is the first year that I've had that proposal come in. Okay. Uh, the, the Utah Lake Linden Marina parking that was submitted last year but like Ty mentioned last year there was also kind of a, a, a scarcity of, of funds available for match so that one was not funded last year uh, the rest of these are all new projects the, the Strawberry Bay amenity enhancements that is part of that includes the repair of an existing wave attenuator out there that the forest service is, is determined is unsafe which one is the biggest sore eye right now Or I. Well, I mean, which one is the biggest problem, child, <laughs> that, you, that you guys are facing? Let me ask you that. Uh, I know Tyna has spoken, and we have, we do feel like out in the Uinta Basin, there is a need for additional facilities to cater to those those boating communities out there. They don't have a whole lot at their disposal. And I know that uh, what, well, like what many areas experienced this year with COVID and the just unbelievable increase in, in recreationists out on the landscape, uh, 
Big Sand Wash and Cottonwood were both overrun. Um, so I think that would be something to consider. The rest of these, I don't know that I would consider any to be, you know, urgent and we got to figure out a way to fund these. But I think some of them are, some of them based on what we saw this last year, uh, um, there's going to be a need, whether it's now or in the very near future. So we probably need to start thinking about <clears throat> Over the next three to five years, what are, what should we plan on having to fund? We have funds available now in, in the federal funding pot. So I think <clears throat> really, I think we have a lot of options. <clears throat> the other thing I want to mention though too, and this will get into our the discussion we're going to have after this, Ty and I both agree that we have a lot of projects coming down the pipe in terms of replacements, uh, maintenance, and we need to figure out a way to, <coughs> excuse me, set aside money every year allocated specifically for replacement and maintenance. Otherwise, we're going to find ourselves in a situation where <coughs> we're going to be forced to replace everything at once, and it's going to take up our entire appropriation for a number of years. Hey, Nate. Nate, it's yeah. George here. So on the Habitat Council, what we did on the Habitat Council is we set aside for each um, region, um, they called it uh, uh, wildlife management area uh, maintenance funds. So there was a portion that was allocated, had to be voted on by the council every year, but a portion allocated towards maintenance on those uh, the WMAs in each region. And that was uh, something that was done a long time ago. And maybe that's something we could do here is allocate a portion um, every year towards a maintenance in a specific area or specific area split it up. Yeah, George, I think that's a great idea. And I think uh, that's kind of what Ty and I were talking about. We probably need to start setting aside a certain percentage of the overall funding available for projects like that. And, and while it's great to fund new projects, we certainly got to take care of what we already have out there. I agree. That's Brett. So there is in this, in this proposal, there is a, uh, there is no percentage that is being put away for future repairs, correct? Correct. What would you consider, what would be uh, uh, an adequate percentage that would actually, I mean, we could set a percentage, but do we know an anticipated price of what we should be saving? I don't know, Ty. What do, what do you think? We've got we've got fish cleaning stations that need to be replaced, you know, fairly frequently. We've got restrooms. We've got parking areas that tend to have maintenance. You know, every seven to ten years, something done to them. Yeah, I I almost look at. Uh, I th I think we can set things as. I mean, I, I would not go above more than 50% of the allocated budget for for replacement. And I think that we could whittle that down over the years. I think we do do because we've, in essence, had a moratorium for, for quite a number of years. Um, things have built up. And I think if we can knock down that uh, that laundry list that we may have, that's, that's something we can look at. But if we can kind of, I think we're jumping a little bit ahead of ourselves on the agenda if we could wrangle ourselves back and let's let's evaluate what we have up here in front for this current um, round of what we can can appropriate for and handle, and then let's move into talking the budget uh, realm, which is next on the agenda. So, really, the only I guess projects that you would kind of throw into a replacement or maintenance would be Otter Creek fish cleaning station and that Strawberry Bay wave attenuator piece. The rest of these are, are new projects. 
Um, Lana, you were able to go to attend the, the Logan River uh, site visit. What, what were your impressions of that project? I was actually very impressed with it. Uh, they've got a lot of community support. They've got uh, different groups that are very involved in seeing that the river is properly used and is being made available to a lot of other um, individuals. They've got it sectioned out so that it's got different categories like skiing so that it's got different groups and different levels. And I thought the entire project was very well thought out and would be a good asset for the area up there that is growing significantly. Logan area has got a lot of new construction and a lot of new people coming into it. And it's just going to need to have a lot more recreational activities. I was very impressed with the project. They had one um, that they showed us that they was actually building a hotel and they had partnered with the hotel and the hotel had actually done a section of the river that they had put in a boating access place right by the hotel, which I thought was really cool. So they've got a lot of support in the project up there. Thank you. Yeah, I thought that, that ramp right by the hotel was pretty cool. It was. That was a cool area. Okay. Um, any other, just before we dive into the individual projects, any other impressions? Are you guys familiar with any of these proposed projects and could potentially speak to to their need? Hey, Nate, it's George here. I can talk to the needs for big sand wash and cottonwood. Um, the, the ramp that's mentioned in the, uh, project proposal, that was actually funded. That was on the Habitat Council. Um, and that was an, uh, identified need that wasn't, there was no dock there before, no way for people to, other than beaching their boat on the boat ramp. So anything that goes into big sand wash, um, because it has gotten a lot of use, it is, a uh, it was an underutilized body of water and cottonwood. Cottonwood, you take your chances at cottonwood if you want to launch a boat. Um, it's uh, it's kind of scary. So, and that one does get a ton of use in the basin. Thanks, George. Does anyone else want to provide any comments before we dive in? And Nathan, I'm just going to put the one in, but like I said, it's 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 a wash because they brought their own money. But the Otter Creek Fish Station, mm -hmm. Fish Cleaning Station, um, it it basically is, it's hit it's hit its lifetime, and uh, it needs extensive repairs to the point that it is going to require a full replacement of of the station. So they're they're looking at also relocating it just for better ease and use and availability for the for the anglers to use and get it to where it doesn't uh, uh well a lot of it is is just to take care of it with with its waste and waste disposal after it's done so that's a lot of where they're trying to move it is trying to get it to where it can have the proper utilities because that's that's one of the big issues that they're having with it too so but like i said that one's a wash um with it it's 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 being funded with other state funds other than what the boating program is putting uh forth for it thanks ty i guess maybe one easy place to start is we've got a couple projects here we've got the Other Creek Fish Cleaning Station. Uh, we've got Big Sand Wash, Access Road Improvements. <clears throat> uh, those two do not require any state parks funding for a match. Uh, the Jordan River one Possibly does not, depending on whether this other 65,000 comes in like they're anticipating. Are we all good? Do we feel comfortable approving 
the Big Sand Wash Project and the Otter Creek Fish Cleaning Station on the basis that they are not going to be pulling any matching funds from that park's matching fund account? I agree. Yeah, I think so. I'm Robert. This is Lana, I agree. I do too. This is George. This is Trent, I agree. Jason agrees. Okay, okay, so yeah. is there do you anyone? need to state that in form of a motion? Yeah, I was going to say, do we have a motion? Yep. I'll I make a motion. The first. Oh, go ahead. Who was first? Oh, it doesn't matter. I was, I'll second it. Okay. I make a motion that we approve the Big Sand Wash Access Road Improvements and the uh, Otter Creek Fish Cleaning Station um, projects because they don't require any state parks match. Um, and move them forward. Okay. I think I heard a second, but I don't get on the thing. Are we good? I, 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 I Robert. I second. Okay. Robert seconds it. Okay. All right, so it's been proposed that we go forward with the uh, big sand wash and with the Otter Creek Fish Cleaning Station because they don't use any of the park funds. Those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Hey, thank you guys. So <clears throat> looks like, and I'll put this in the chat as well, we now have this amount still available for projects and federal funds. So 217, basically 218,000 in federal funds left and we still have the full $50,000 in parks match. So uh, the Cottonwood Reservoir Boat Ramp Design and Engineering only requires $3,000 in parks match. Um, looks like generally <clears throat> all of these will fall, and I'll, I'll have to actually add these up, Ty. We might be pretty close to, let's see. 286. So yeah, Ty, we've got roughly $53,000 in state parks matching funding needs here. If we if we discount Fish Lake since we've already committed to that. Yeah, I am. I, I'm going to kind of hold a little firm to that, to that not to exceed. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm not going to make it easy <laughs> no, that's not with it. Lana, Lana, I think Lana had her hand up. Um, there's also, if you guys on the, the bottom bar where you have your mute and your camera and hang up, there's a place where it says raise hand. Um, if you, you're more than welcome to utilize that too. And we'll try to watch and see if we can, uh, get to you also on that one. Go ahead, Lana, if you had a question. No, I didn't have a question. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm trying to keep my hands off my mouse. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So with the $50,000 <clears throat> parks match kind of ceiling in mind, there are a couple options here that would probably put us below that 50,000 mark. And one would be, we could scale down the Utah Lake Linda Marina parking to that $32,000 project total and fund everything else. We could, uh, the live cameras at Utah Lake Marinas, like I said, 
they were calling for, I can't remember how many ramps, but <clears throat> it was, it was more than a handful. I believe we could scale that back and potentially bring that total parks match need down to under 50,000. Uh, most of these other ones, uh, they're so minute. Yeah. They're small. Those are the big ones. Yeah. That are left. How bad is the Linden Marina parking lot? Like, what are you? To, are is this just a pave over? Or is it? Is it uh, a full tear off and replace? I'm not familiar with that tire. You or is anyone else familiar with that? I'm not sure of what they're fully asking for that. I'm probably saying that there were options to increase um, actual paved uh, capacity. Um, pay parking spots to increase their capacity there at Linden. So I'm unsure on that one there. We'll have to probably get further further info. I'm going to pull up the proposal right here. <clears throat> See what they're asking again. So they're talking about resurfacing and repairing. Uh, Does it say how many additional parkings they would be adding? I don't know. Do you guys, do you all have access to that proposal? And if so, I would recommend pulling it up if you can. Um, I have not seen this one. Uh, Nate, this was in your email that you sent earlier. I'm looking through it right now. It's about 37 pages. Yeah, it's a, it's a big one. On, is that on that proposal that you sent out, Nate? Yes. Uh, let's see right here. Hey, Nate, this is George. Hey, it looks like they're, it's just a resurfacing, but they're widening the access road from 15 to 25 feet. Um, and that's about a quarter of the project. That looks like it's twelve thousand between seven and twelve thousand dollars for the widening, and the rest of it looks like it's just resurfacing and resurfacing and, uh, yeah. potholes. So, if we went with the resurfacing right now and for and push the uh, widening of the access road until later. That would that would take care of our shortcomings, right? Or are we just putting a band-aid on a parking lot by resurfacing it and it's gonna be destroyed in two years because of the amount of people that are going boating? That's why I was asking <laughs> how many more parking stalls are we gonna get? Because the volume of boaters that are coming out of the woodworks in the last year, I mean we're gonna we're gonna double the traffic. So if we if we spend the money on this parking lot and it's only a surface repair, then in a sense, are we just kind of throwing our money away? Still over cracks. Yeah. I mean, Ty, is there even room to expand that parking lot? Man, I feel uh, if you would have asked me this 10 years ago, I could have told you easily because I was there. Yeah. <laughs> <We're> there. <laughs> I have not I have not frequented uh, this marina very much since uh, since I left left the lake um, with it. So I'm not, probably not going to give you the best um, uh, opinion on that because I'm not sure what they've done, but I know that from, from what I can remember out of that, there was room to expand and uh, it is awfully helpful, helpful when you do your expansion to harden the surface and then be able to get some stripes on it because it, it's just more easily um, regulated. And, and in the past, uh, this one was not very regulated and it ended up into a lot of 
trailer die type of damage because everybody was just kind of parking willy nilly, and uh, we got we got several calls over to that area for uh, disputes on on accidents. The only reason why I bring that up, you guys, is because uh, being being as the boating dealer rep, I have talked to a lot of my colleagues that are in the other dealers, and our our businesses obviously are grew exponentially last year. So going forward, I'm looking at the budget, and uh, realistically, we have to account that we're probably going to get another. We're probably going to stay about thirty percent more boaters than we have had in the past. So where could we where could we actually put the money to where those extra boaters and you know we can we can uh, how can I say it we can provide a better boating equi- uh, experience for the new boaters that are coming out along with the previous you know uh, equipment and you know parks that we have but I mean I haven't heard anything about how much the boating ha- uh, community has grown and how we're going to go forward with expanding that area. You know, we can sit here and talk about repaving a park, a parking lot and, and, and things like that. But I mean, really uh, it, we got to look that we're, we're getting almost 30% more boaters that are going to be on Utah lakes. So in a, in a sense, how can we spend the money to appease a lot of that too on that side? So, hey, Robert, it's George here. And, uh, and I don't know if you have the project proposal up, but towards the bottom, I think it's on page 30, 13, there's a map. And it shows that uh, probably with some re-engineering, they could expand their opportunities for parking boats. There it is. Yeah, there's the map. And I'm trying to look at my computer and this computer at the same time. It's not working. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, like, it looks like they have an opportunity to expand their parking area because um, there's there's kind of a, a big round semicircle up in the one spot. And I'd say they have room to expand parking um, if it was laid out correctly. And they've got a whole bunch of parking that's doesn't look like it's effectively set up, I guess is the word. Yeah, it's an, there's the map. Hey, hey Nathan, I, Jason, I was kind of looking at this too. Did you notice that the bids are all 2019? Have they been updated or is there a, something in there that says, because I mean, most contract bids go up 3 to 4% per year. Is this... <laughs> Have you seen how much a two by four is now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I do know the project proponent did re-engage with the construction companies during this go around. I just don't know if that was updated in the report or in the proposal. Um, so yeah, that's a that's a great question, and I, I'd have to reach back out to them and just double check that. But I know that those updated conversations were had this go around. I just don't. I can't remember if they were reflected or not. I didn't compare it against the the previous version. Probably something I could do right now if you guys can hold. Well, we're getting a little bit short on time. We've got about five minutes left for this part of the. I mean, because reading the proposal, you know, they're they're going to cut stuff out, you know, cut and repair it. You know, maybe this is just a fix for them for a, for the next six or seven years till they come up with a better plan of expanding the parking lot, you know? And so I don't know, I'm kind of reading it. I'm like, well, for the price of what it is and them kind of fixing this area, maybe it does make sense to do what they're doing. But with those bids being 2019, you know, that by 2022 or whatever, they could be up 8%, you know, um, by that time. That'd be my concern. Yeah, that's a valid point. <clears throat> and I can reach out if you if you vote to, you know, potentially approve this project to whatever amount is available. I can reach out to that uh, applicant and say, OK, you know, the Voting Advisory Council has approved this amount of funding for this project for this amount. What would be accomplished on the ground? 
And is that something that would make a difference or would they rather hold off and see potentially more funding next year as, as more funds are freed up? My vote is to actually postpone this and, and save the fundings. This is an area where we can save the fundings because to me, it sounds like they really haven't planned it out, but things have also changed since 2019. So I think between it being a bid from 2019 to the, the actual influ, uh, in the the influx of new boaters, we may want to reevaluate this before we okay that project. Wait, I guess there is a note in here that says this application was applied for in 2019. Both contractors were notified and both said they would honor the price that's estimated in 2019 for this year's application. So sorry. I just read that. Thanks, hey Jason. Nate, can you send me that email? I can't find it. Sure. Thanks. Of course. Let's see. I have your task. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Awesome. That's yeah. one. Nate, if you want me to, I can go ahead and hit it and you can stay okay. on. That would be great. Thanks, Thanks Ty. Man. Thanks, Ty. <laughs> so <clears throat> that's it. Yeah, that brings up another point too, is if we're talking about funding this at, you know, essentially the bare bones minimum, kind of like Robert was alluding to, do we feel comfortable with that knowing that the need is going to be greater you know, in the next few years, because really the amount we could put towards this project based on the available match, it would be absolute bare bones minimum. I yeah, just, I, sorry. Ahead, no, I was just, I was just going to try and, and just say, I just, I don't know. This is the one project that I think might need some more thinking uh, before we approve it. I, I just, I really do. I agree with Robert. I mean, if we just resurface it now, but don't really add anything, we're not doing much to it. I think it's something that needs to be revisited. Maybe we speak with the applicant or Nate, you speak with the applicant and we go forward with maybe a better plan with the, the expected growth of that 30% that Robert's experienced. Well, I think it's also, oh, sorry, Nate, I didn't, I just think that if we are going to try and, you know, uh, try to conserve some of this grant money, that is one that, that's a pretty big price tag for Ty to take, and that's money that we could save, plus it's a project that is not 100% from what I can see. So it's almost stealing two birds with one stone in a sense. The other thing I wanted to bring up too is, you know, as we as we talk about anticipating the need over the next five to ten years, and you start talking about potentially expanding parking, that brings in a whole other aspect of design and engineering that would probably need to be funded prior to actually putting anything on the ground. So this would end up being a multi-phase project and just to make sure we got it right and so i personally i i like that approach because i think right now we've been well recently in a lot of ways we've been reacting to what's been going on and it's just the way it is it's human tendency but i think this year showed us what the future holds in terms of being able to accommodate the people out there that want these things and want to experience what we have to offer. And even though it's tough, I think we probably knew, do need to take a step back and look at that, you know, 10 to 20 year need rather than the need for the next year or two, because we, we will not have the funding to go back into a place like this in five years and redo it. We're just not going to have the ability to do that. Hey Nate, George here. Um, is there is there time and opportunity to convert this to an engineering only project if they so decide? Yeah, so great question, George. So if if this funding is not obligated to this project, 
it basically sits in this pot that we will still have available for either another project for this next fiscal year, or if we want to push it down the road, it'll add on to what we're going to get for FY23 projects. So we're not going to lose it. It'll be available and we can go back to the applicant and say, look, you know, we, we like the proposal, but we have these concerns. And this is something that maybe we would suggest you exploring. And if so, that's something that we could we could ap approve in the future. We definitely have that ability. And that would be my recommendation on this project is based on what we saw on the map, based on what Robert's saying, um, it would be best to table it and go back to them and say, we're looking down the road. Let's do this instead. Does that make sense? Yeah. I'll so do we have a motion to take this one then? Uh, I was just going to say, I'll take them, I'll, t I'll put the first motion in that. I say we hold off on this one. I'll second. George seconds. Okay. George seconds. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. So, those that are in favor of tabling this motion right now on the Utah Lake. Uh, Linden Marina parking, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you. So, so based on, go ahead, Nate. Oh, yeah, no, I was just going to say so based on the council's determination to hold off on that one that would put every other project on here including fish lake um that would put us under that cap tithe of fifty thousand dollars for new projects we'd be sitting at thirty four thousand one hundred ninety three for the parks match requirement does that are you comfortable with that ty I Cat. think I saw a thumbs up. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying. I got to say it verbally so it can be recorded. Yes, I am very comfortable <laughs> with that. <laughs> I'm giving thumbs up and trying, trying to get it. So I thought, I don't know if that was your head or a thumb because you're only half in the screen. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm trying to do what's his name, you know, Wilson. <laughs> so anyway, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so sorry about that. I, my reading glasses are not working with this small screen being so far away. So I'm just lifting the computer up to my face. So, <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So do we have an emotion to approve the rest of these projects? I'll make the first motion, Robert. <clears throat> I'll second the motion. This is Trent. Okay. Thank you, Robert and Trent. So uh, it is proposed that we go ahead and um, approve the rest of these projects here. And uh, those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hey, okay, thank you. So that should take care of our first section here of evaluating the grant submissions. Thank you guys. So George, can I, can I ask for a recommendation or make a, a suggestion that as we move forward with doing these grant submissions, that we're able to get these before we vote on them so we can thoroughly vet them and review them. Um, so we don't wind up with like the, you know, Robert came up with the Linden Marina as an idea to, to it should be expanded to accommodate future growth. Is it possible to get the, the proposals to us like two weeks in advance of the voting on them. Yes. Yes, that's possible. And I think, I think some of the, the quickness there's, there's been a lot of uh, other things I know on Nathan's plate. Uh, he, he pulled a, a huge, a huge effort yesterday um, rolling through with an AIS um, meeting. So anyway, hats off to you, Nathan. Thank you for the time you put forth in organizing this because 
uh, you got a lot in your hat or a lot of hats on top of your noggin there and, <laughs> and get this going. So thanks. I appreciate you a bunch. And yes, we need to do better in getting this stuff out. And I think that's probably been said in the minutes of, for a long time in most of this group. So uh, hold, hold our feet to the fire and let's get, let's make sure we get this out there for when it comes up for next year. Um, Mr. Olson, uh, with yes, Vice, do you want me to take, uh, can I, can I take a minute and let's talk about uh, how we could potentially split up the budget for next year? Or yes, you please come? Let's do that. Nathan, do you want me to take the lead on this one? Okay. All righty. So Nathan gave me a thumbs up on that one. Um, I guess just as we can kind of go through is this has been an idea that Nathan and I have kicked around. I really like George's idea that there was an amount um, or um, that we could roll with that will just take care of maintenance and, and replacement of, of curtain, uh, current projects that we have out there. Um, it is so awesome to build projects, and I and I know from a facility point in time, uh, from a facilitator's view of working at a facility, a facility and managing these, it's hard to get money to build them. When you do get the money, you build them. But then I think a lot of time we're just like, aha, that's great, and I won't need to touch this for quite a long time. And I think at that point in time that once we start breaking ground on these projects, we need to start looking at its lifetime and we need to start scheduling when the big repairs need to be, if there are big repairs that we know of. And also we need to be looking at replacing that when it's, when it's hit, hit its usefulness or surpassed its usefulness. So that's really what I want to kind of put out here. Um, I, if George, if you have some more information on what you've seen with the Habitat Council, I think that was great, a great idea. Maybe we can get that on record and we can start following some, some of that. And I can certainly pass that on in an email form to you or Nate or Brett and let you know how we divvied that up. Um, and it was, it, it depended on the region, what was going on, but we had a fixed amount of the budget and, it, and because we were dealing with a lot of different, the way the money was allocated. So a percentage came from each group, so to speak, and then went into that maintenance fund for each of those regions. Um, and I can send out how that worked. Um, it was pretty simple and it was all we had to do was they, they brought forth, here's what it needs to be this year to accommodate all of the tasks we have. And then we voted on it. Yeah. I, I, I like that idea um, with that. I think if we were to look at maybe breaking up a, a percentage of the overall annual budget for the for the grants um i would i like the the thing that popped in my mind this would be great to run it on a regional perspective so in case we had a lot in one region and not a lot in another region we can maybe defer and start doing some rotations around the state if we needed to um and nate you've got one more region that we have uh, with your division there and it probably since you are the uh, administrative agency on this probably defer to your region boundaries so we can roll with that. Do you like that idea? Yeah, I like that idea. Okay. Um, does anybody have any heartburn of taking at, at, you know, as a start with this is maybe putting half, you know, right close to, we can just put an even number of saying $500,000 of, of taking and doing maintenance, um, that could be two, two, probably two larger docks. Um, we could do a lot of fish cleaning stations, and then I don't know, paving five k, five hundred k is kind of pocket change with the way that things go. Because I know oil prices have gone down, but man, asphalt has not gone down, and I know that concrete hasn't gone down; it's gone exponentially up too. So. Uh, just materials have just been crazy. So I think we need to be planning that into uh, taking that into account also. And could that percentage be a flexible number that say year after year we review it, we start with 50% and then maybe end up down to 30%. Yes, that's what I would recommend because I don't want to make it hard fast. 
in with it. And I, I think, uh, you know, once we can get everything kind of settled down, our, our big deal is, is that I want to start, um, rebuilding as I, as I talked with, uh, you earlier, um, Brett, um, I like to try to keep in the matching funds at least one year in reserve, um, just in case something goes awry um, with the project. We are not there right now. Um, we have been funding a lot of projects, but it is a little scary that 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 reserve, that reserve that I started off in taking this position is gone and we need to get it back. Okay. Any any other recommendations with that the group may have in dealing with this budget? As of right now, we've got 500K flexible, can be flexible each year, and we do some breaking up between regions, and maybe we focus on a region per year um, as we go through, or uh, a couple of regions in the process. I think we keep it fluid. Um, are there any other ideas that we may have out there in working with this? Is that 500,000? Is that, is it possible to be saving out of that for, to get the, the, the reserve funds back up? Or is that well, money that we have to use? No, it's not money that we have to use. So is if we don't use it all, it rolls over. And that's the that's the cool thing about this particular um, fund that we have is that it's 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 an item that we can keep we can kind of keep building the bank, um, but again we've got to be need to be careful of how we how we manage manage the bank because sometimes if it gets uh, too too large sometimes it could be reappropriated in other places, and so. But we need to make sure that we do the right thing and we keep um, enough funding there so we can take care of what we have out there and we can build new facilities or, or bring new amenities to the voters of the state. Yeah, and I can just add to that. So the unobligated federal funds carry over each year. Um, but... Obviously, you know, one limiting factor is the state parks match. <clears throat> and so we need to figure out a way to balance approving projects that don't require us dipping into that state parks match. So that reserve can start building up while at the same time, almost fully utilizing the federal funds each year, or at least have a very good justification for not doing so because one of our legislative measures of success is the amount of federal funding that it, we're obligating to voter access projects in Utah. And like Ty mentioned, if that success measure falls short, you know, a few years in a row, we're going to start getting questions as to why we are not fully leveraging federal dollars that are meant for our use on our reservoirs. And we don't want to be put into that position. So that's one thing to just keep in mind. Uh, the other thing I want to bring up, and it's not, I'm not advocating one way or another, but you know, with the Fish Lake project, it's there was a huge need up there. And it's a it's been, you know, four or five years now since we started working on that. There is a, I've heard this from a few people, maybe we need to consider capping the total amount of funding that we are willing to put towards one project. Um, again, I'm not advocating one way or another, but just to put it, that in perspective, the Fish Lake project, when it's all said and done, is going to be about three and a half million dollars. Uh, and that's, you know, essentially consuming three full years of the entire boating access allocation. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Again, something to consider and for, for discussion. I'm not advocating one way or another, but that does, if we don't cap that or if we're not aware of that, we do find ourselves in the situation we've been in where we get a lot of new proposals and we just don't have any funding to really fund anything. Yeah. And, and I'm going to say that the state, I think, has brought... Um, through the the office of of tourism 
Um, they brought some monies in, and some of these entities that are not state related, the counties, um, and even certain businesses that, the, and that would be something similar like Linden, they could apply for a grant for this and they could get that state grant. We could utilize that state money that they're getting to leverage the 25% to put forth on the federal grant. I'm just making sure I'm correct with that. As long as it's not federal funds, it can be utilized um, with this. And so this is something that I'm working with my administration too, is that so we don't lose our, our leverage out of this. Uh, anything that comes through a state park, we have funds that are that are made available, and also we have our crews and equipment. So if we if we are utilizing our crew and equipment, we haven't always in the past um, counted that as in kind. And so we need to we need to be making sure that we are doing a little bit smarter with our estimations and and doing these things. Plus, uh, we can utilize some some different state funds other than what the boating program has to leverage it. Otter Creek is an example of that. So this is something that's, it, it's, it's a little bit of a paradigm shift for, for us of pushing the applicants just because we got some big projects that are still out there and we've done really good over the last, oh, I don't even know how many years. It's, it's, it's 20 plus years of doing and, and funding and, and, and getting new things in here. But a lot of that stuff that we have done um, is coming back around and we need to, we need to start hammering it out. Plus trying to re get ready for the growth that's coming and, and we're maybe way behind on the growth on being prepared for that growth. Okay, so do we want to make a motion now to um, set aside a percentage of those funds, or do we want to wait until George can send us um, kind of an idea of how we should break this down? I'd like to see what George has. Okay, anyone else? This is Lana. I think it's a good thing to look at another option too. Okay. So rather than make a decision today, um, we're gonna we'll we'll table this until next time. I'll make the first motion, Robert. To table. I have the second motion to table. This is Lana. Okay, thank you, Lana. Okay, so what we uh, we have motion right now to table the discussion on um, changing percentage of funds to set aside for maintenance, um, and we will table that till next time. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you. We will table that until next time. Ty, back to you. Uh, let me get that going. All right. Uh, I think next on the agenda is other business. Um, is there any other business that anybody needs to bring forth? Um, if not, I want to see if I can kind of put a little bit of a plug in again for the for the group. I know we've got um, kind of pre-COVID was when we met last time, and it hit, and we all scattered and did whatever we had to do to either – keep our businesses running, our jobs going, and, and keep up with the public, you know, for us on our behalf. And so is there anything out there that your group may have? And then I can take a second just to have some assistance so we can get our ninth uh, position uh, filled. Ty, do you know that the attendance of Jordanelle and Deer Creek from last year? from last season from the previous season um, from 18 I don't, to 19 by chance i don't have those numbers um i'd really uh, be interested to see them okay i'll see if i can get uh visitation numbers for for our water bodies um becky if you can help kick me in the in the behind on that one and make sure that i can uh <laughs> Get that done for the group. That would be great. I'll I'll make some notes in here that I got to get that. But 
I'll get you some visitation numbers. Um, I will know that we exponentially grew. I think there were some hindrances that we had um, when we when we first started some things off. But man, when uh, Memorial Day came around, at least on for Northern Utah, it went nuts. Um, Southern Utah was crazy and still is crazy with things and i think as neighboring states uh start to, to squeeze their restriction down they've uh, they've found utah and they're coming and they're mm -hmm. going to continue to come so just be ready that uh it, it's it's everywhere is going to be a little a little a little crowded so well from so, what i can say uh and and the, i don't have the actual like documentation to back it. i've only heard this through the grapevine of the dealers but i have heard that on a normal year for lake pal uh on dangling rope they normally get 11 fuel barges per year per season last year they got 36 fuel barges so if that tells you how many people and how many boats were on that lake last year, and that's Lake Powell. So I, that's why I asked for the numbers of the other lakes, because it, are they getting hit as well, you know, at, that hard? Yeah, I can speak to that just from the boat inspections that we've done. Last year was our historic high, and we did 307,000 statewide. This year, we're going to be pushing 475,000. Uh, at Lake Powell alone, we're going to have a, almost 170,000 inspections. So across the board, including the state parks, we've seen an increase of 40 to 50 percent. Most places, places like Bear Lake, we're seeing almost a double of what we have in the past. We're up 90 to 95 percent. So just oh. unbelievable numbers. Yep. Yep. Jordan L not slowing down either with all the home construction that's surrounding that reservoir. Every home that stares at the lake is going to want to be out on the lake in one form or another. Um, and I, I think that, you know, installing some form of, of a standing wave or encouraging the paddle sports community to head over to the rock cliff side of the reservoir could ease some of the traffic that, that's on that, that reservoir could be such a nice, large, no wake zone over there just to kind of split it up. And I don't know what the process for, for trying to get something like that done would be, but I think, I think going forward, it's going to be incredibly useful to, to, you know, revitalize that nature center over in the rock cliff area and, and, you know, do a little a little boardwalk along the river and, and put in a standing wave or some features to kind of entice people, you know, away from your main entrances uh, to the reservoir. I, I want to bring up one idea, and this kind of gets to George, your, your comment about uh, the council being able to get proposals earlier. I've talked to Ty about this, and this has been something I've wanted to pursue for a couple of years now. But uh, my goal is to work with our uh, technology department to figure out a way to create an online uh, submission portal for voter access projects. So, well, hopefully it'll take a lot off my plate trying to organize everything, but also it allows them to it would allow applicants to log in and submit their proposal online and we could provide access to you. So when something is submitted, you are notified and you can go in and take a look rather than having me try to figure out how to share it with everyone and these, you know, 38 to 40 page proposals. So I'm hoping that we can make some progress on that front and we'll have some sort of online system available <laughs> starting in summer. So as the next round of proposals for next fall comes in, uh, you should have real-time access to those. And, and George here, and I would highly recommend that because one of the things being on the Habitat Council and Blue Ribbon, um, it was because the projects were submitted, you could go review them at any time after submission um, and you could actually add comments to them, which a lot of times went back to the project, uh, whoever proposed the project, 
they could adjust and adapt accordingly. Um, so having an online submission, I'm wholly in support of that. Nathan, is that is that something that's already being ran um, through some of the other groups? No, I've I've approached our technology folks about it, and they know it's on my radar. We haven't made any progress yet. I was hoping to start on that uh, in January. Okay. So any way we can partner on that, Ty, I would I would certainly appreciate that. Okay. No, we'll see what we can get done. Thank you. Okay, um, I've got some notes here. Um, a couple of things that I'll get, of course, is visitation numbers. Uh, as soon as I can get that, I'll disperse them out. And then it will be mid to late January um, is when I compile the registered uh, boat numbers that we have. And I've got a history of those to back to the early 70s when we... Um, probably maybe even into the the late 60s i got to remember on the on the chart there but uh i can provide that to your groups just for your your reading pleasure so you can look at numbers on there and you can see that uh wonderful uptick of boating um and then you see the explosion that occurred with personal watercraft um and then you see where the rug got pulled out uh, and, and, and where we're currently are now. And let's see what COVID does with it if we've got a, another jump. Um, but that's that's pretty useful information that we can have and go. And, I'll, and again, with the visitation numbers, I'm going to see if we can poll from 2017 to the 2020 season, 2020 year, calendar year um, for your all. So, so you can you can look at it and understand and see where we're at. Um, I think the only other thing is, is, is when would we, I feel better if we can just select a time now, I think it works better if we can do that. Um, sometimes trying to juggle and get dates and things for everybody, uh, to go with is awfully, awfully kind of hard and coordinating, um, through and, and I don't know if we can look, but we, we need to get back on our routine thing. So we've. We finished it up. Um, I think we can forego. We can almost, well, it's December this. I guess it would be up with you guys. Do you feel like we need to do a, a uh, January, that, that beginning of what we would call second quarter, the second, uh, sorry, the third quarter, beginning of the third quarter for the state? I'm flipping between federal quarters and state quarters. I apologize for that one there. So the state runs off July 1 with that one. So uh, beginning of, of third quarter, if we want to do one in January, or do we want to forego the third quarter, hit a fourth quarter one, and start getting to where we're meeting on a more regular basis on quarterly fashion? What I'd say let's get back do, to do we have a lot to discuss quarter? in January? It probably would be good to uh, maybe we could do a short one, do a virtual one like we did now. Um, I think this is easier and cuts down on travel um, in some realms. Um, and we can I, we can give you the information. Maybe uh, maybe we can do a little bit of an AIS update and where we're kind of going. We're going to go into pre uh, legislative sessions. So if we have anything that may pop up, we can discuss with you all. Um, but I'm looking at something. What do you think, Nate? If you were to do a little bit of an update, uh, maybe we can hit an hour or something like that. Maybe hour and a half max. Yeah, that would that would work for me. Um, let's see. The session starts. I can't remember. They changed the date. Uh, it's the. Hang on. Did that pass that they changed the date? Yeah, I think so. Because traditionally it always starts the Monday after Martin Luther King Day, so it'd be the 25th. Mm -hmm. Let me go to le.utah.gov. Something like the 13th or 14th would work.
okay, what they have on here. The first day of the annual general session will be the first Tuesday after the third Monday in January. So, <laughs> it's like Easter. <laughs> two, three. So it'll be the nineteenth. The first Tuesday after the third Monday will be the nineteenth. Nineteenth. Okay. So they did. They did move it up a week. Yeah. So yeah, the the thirteenth or fourteenth would work for me. Um, probably maybe the twelfth, depending on the time, but nothing before that. Fourteenth would work for me. I can I can do any day of the twelfth through the fourteenth if it's a virtual day. Virtual yeah. day. Yeah, I also have flexibility. This is kind of for a virtual daddy. <laughs> <laughs> this is Lana. I'm available any of those days. I'm available as well. Okay. Let's start. These virtual meetings are a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't have traffic and trying to rush and you have to disrupt your day too much with things there. So um, I think George, who was it? was only the 14th. Uh, I said I, I could do any of uh, but 14th would work. 12th through the 14th would work for me. And that's me too. Okay. Should we do 13th? Let's, yeah, let's put, let's put a Wednesday there. Can we... Okay. Do we like something just like after lunch? Do we like the one o'clock? Yeah, that mm -hmm. works. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. And then whatever time zone you're in, Trent, we'll try to work that out. <laughs> you're like, yeah, oh, whatever. <laughs> okay, so, so we're going to go, we're going to schedule it for 1 p.m. January 13th, Mountain Standard Time. Okay. And then uh, we'll get a we'll get an invite sent out to you all, so we have that, and then we'll coordinate um, with our IT folks to where they can get this wonderful thing set up here, to where we can try this again. Sounds okay. good. All okay. right, leave it up to Vice Chair here to to wrap it up. Okay, so I guess we will make a motion to adjourn. I will I'll second make that. <laughs> I'll second it. <laughs> okay, motion to adjourn. All in favor, say aye. 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 <laughs> Any opposed? Okay. Who was the person who said it first? Oh, who? Trent. Trent. Uh, Sorry, Trent. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Hey, and hat off to Becky with this one because sometimes bouncing with all these, that's that was tough. So thanks, Becky, for uh, yeah. keeping track of us. You're welcome. All righty. Hey, thank you. Thank you, everybody. And you guys have a Merry Christmas. Um, you guys all have a good Christmas, too. Yep. Spend you as much time as you can with your family and just keep yourself safe and healthy. And, and we'll see you on uh, the 13th of January. Thanks a bunch. Okay. Happy holidays. See you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.